Hey everyone, Brendan Setter here. How are you? Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to another episode of New Music Finds. So this is where I like to collect together all the different albums that I've purchased over the past week and I get it from different places like, of course, my local record store, but also online retail like Amazon, eBay, and more. Got a little bit from everywhere this particular week. And we'll dive into all of this in just a bit here. I've got six things to run through with you, but if you're new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please click the button. Also leave a comment, hit like, all those things help support my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. And of course, as an added bonus by subscribing, you'll be able to stay up to date on all that's going on in the world of music, just like this with another episode of New Music Finds. So as we always do, we kick off with new releases. And you know, as we're starting to wind down the year here, the end of 2022, uh, where December 2nd was this past Friday, not much is coming out. I chose to only pick up one thing, but I'm really glad that I did. It is the Neil Young Harvest 50th Anniversary Deluxe Edition box set. I have done a full review of this and I am gonna leave a link in the description for it. Um, the box set surprised me I'm on a couple levels, and I talk about it in the review, but I'll cover a little bit of it right here, which is just simply both the quality of material and uh, not only of uh, uh, how it sounds, but what they gave you in here, I think was really worth it. The box set itself started off at a $57 price on Amazon, but came down 20 bucks to $37 by its release day. Uh, if you have Prime and you pre-order, you're guaranteed to get it at the lowest price no matter when you uh, pre-order it. And so I got it for the $37 and for a five disc box set, I found it to totally be worth the $37. Uh, you get the studio album, the original one, you get a live concert, which I actually ended up liking that a lot better. Uh, you get three studio outtakes, which are absolutely stupendous. And you get two DVDs, not only the live concert visually, but you get a two hour documentary about the recording of it that was shot back in 1971. So not something new, it was actually done at that time and just never released. So very cool stuff, it's in a clamshell, or not a clamshell, it's in just a lift top style box like that and hard bound a book, poster, um, very cool stuff like that. Definitely worth checking out if you are a Neil Young fan. All right, but I also got some stuff from my local record store. First thing up being a Fleetwood Mac. Uh, this is a selections of from the four disc box set that was called 25 Years the Chain. This is a two CD edition of it. Um, and I actually picked it up I've got the box set, so it was just a matter of, okay, kind of cool, they pared it down, let me check this thing out. Uh, in my opinion, you know, they took out a lot of the filler, they took out the live tracks, things like that. So this is just sort of distilled down to the real sort of meat and potatoes of what was the really cool stuff, the outtakes, the new tracks, alternate mixes, things like that. What I didn't know is that there's actually two additional tracks on here that aren't on the box set. While they're not unreleased tracks, one of them I believe is the song Hold On from Mirage. Uh, this, the, it was just kind of cool that you got something a little extra like that on here, something that was a little different. Not sure why they chose to put two additional studio tracks from the albums on this uh, selections of disc that didn't come out over there. Don't know why, but I did uh, like that. And again, just one more reason for me to own it in the collection. But I popped this thing on and found that I enjoyed this so much more than the box set. The way that the track listing is on the box set uh, just didn't quite flow for me, but it sure does now on this thing here. So really glad to get a hold of that. Didn't even know that they had made it when I came across it. And of course, with the passing of Christine McVie, it just made it all that much sweeter to find that. Um, then uh, let's see, the uh, other thing that I picked up when I was at the record store, going a little out of sequence here from what I was thinking I was gonna show you, but Carl Wilson, uh, you know, Beach Boy, uh, this debut solo album came out, um, never came out on CD here in the States. So when this came out, reissue as in 2015, it was the first time on CD. And very much enjoyed that. I looked into getting it a few weeks back before the most recent um, reissue that they put out, which actually did come out on December 2nd. I chose not to pick it up, but uh, called Sail on Sailor. And it was the Carl and the Passions album plus Holland paired together with a bunch of outtakes and things of that nature. May still pick that up, but somewhere down the road. Made me think about this and I looked into it and was surprised to find it's out of print seven years later. And I didn't also didn't realize it had been out that long. I thought it had just been put out a few years ago, but you know, that just shows you how time flies. 
And so I uh, went to Sound Exchange and they happen to have it. I mean, that store has all kinds of things that never ceases to amaze me, all these great out of print items. They're just hidden away in there. And if you know where to look and hunt, uh, you can find that sort of stuff. So I picked those two things up. Um, one of the ones that I ordered off of eBay and got in record time, like three days, Mick Fleetwood, The Visitor, his debut solo album. And when you say solo, I mean, he's just the one playing drums. He doesn't write the tracks and he's not playing all the other instruments or singing. So I guess that's uh, just, you know, matter of opinion, whether it's really a solo track or is he just uh, a session guy backing up the other people. But it is under his name. He gets the recognition and uh, we've got cool guests on here. We've got uh, Peter Green is on here doing a couple tracks and singing. Uh, you've got a Lindsey Buckingham written song that's on here. And it's just a pretty cool album in and of itself. Uh, quite varied across the board. It does feature a lot of um, African musicians and things of that nature on it. I think there was a theme behind it uh, when it was put together at that time. This is the Wounded Bird reissue. In fact, I think that's the only way it was ever available on CD here in the States. I don't know if it had an original CD uh, issue, but uh, you get all the track listing with all the people who are on it on the back side there. So pick that up off of eBay. And when I went to Factory Records a week or two back, there was an album that I found, uh, you know, record that I found and um, was thinking about picking it up and it was about 10 bucks and decided to look it up online real quick to see if it was available on CD and sure enough it was. And I was able to order it on CD for the same amount, just had to wait about a week to get it. Tim Carr, don't know anything about this guy here, but as you can see from this front cover shot of it, album came out in 1989. It's uh, you know, right smack dab in the middle of the glam metal thing. This here's a little more straight ahead rock and roll than the glam metal, the sleaze rock type stuff, but it is right in that vein. And he's got a cool voice, um, cool musicians backing him up on here. In fact, Tracy Guns plays on the album. So it was just something cool that I didn't know anything about. It's out on the EMI label. And I did a, you know, YouTube listen to a couple tracks. I liked it, so I decided to go ahead and order it on CD and add it to my collection. I'm trying to pick up every glam metal release I can from back in the day. I just love these things that much. And then the last thing that I picked up, I ended up just ordering off of Amazon. The Record Store Day put out a Doors album, a new one called Paris Blues, and it just really put me in the mood for that sort of stuff. And so I thought I'd finally give Robbie Krieger's solo album, latest one, which is called The Ritual Begins at Sundown, A Chance. And, you know, after I got it, I kind of remember why I hadn't picked it up originally in the first place. But it's uh, jazz, more jazz leaning than rock. Not as much of it outright sounds like what you would expect from The Doors, but cool nonetheless. I, I'm not so much, it doesn't have to be an album that blows me away. Sometimes I just want more. And when I need that, I'm gonna have this album here. And so I've listened to it a few times and it is an intriguing listen and maybe it's something that will grow on me. Unfortunately, none of Krieger's solo albums really sounded anything like The Doors, unless of course he was doing a cover of one of The Doors songs, which he would occasionally do on his albums. So kind of leave it to the other guys. Um, you know, Ray Manzarek would do the stuff that sounded more like The Doors and I do have those albums and so forth. So there you go. That's the stuff that I picked up. That's my new music find six different things from this past week. Hopefully enjoyed seeing it, and I'm sure you got your own different stuff. Let me know what you picked up, but otherwise, have a great one, and I'll be talking to you all real soon. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.